Hey there Parkinson's Warriors. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about the jobs that you can take uh, as someone with Parkinson's. So, uh, you know, as someone with Parkinson's you may not want to have a really high stressful job or you may not want to have a, a job that requires a lot of uh, manual or physical labor. Uh, so things like that we're going to talk about and some places where you can uh, find a, either find a job or uh, use your skills that you already have on uh, doing your current job a little differently. So we'll talk about that. First thing I want to talk about though is my new book, Parkinson's Warrior. It's called Parkinson's Warrior, Fighting Back and Taking Control. And it's my new book just out this uh, last, last month. So if you want to pick up a copy, there's a link in the description. It has a lot of information, inspiration, and it's part memoir as well. So a lot of information in this book and it's a really good buy uh, for anyone who has Parkinson's or anyone who has someone that they love who has Parkinson's. So, all right, let's talk a little bit about jobs. So if, let's say, you worked in an office and you were, you know, having a, a, a great career and you're 20 years in and you have reached a high level or, or, um, or you know, have, have, you're part of a large team, for example, um, and now you, you're diagnosed with Parkinson's, what do you do? You only well, you have a few options. You can obviously keep working. If you want to keep working, uh, you can do that. If you, uh, your body can handle it, you could uh, retire early, right? Uh, sometimes there's a thing called forced retirement. So forced retirement is when you go to your manager, you tell them you have Parkinson's and the following week they lay you off. So this is by the way, very illegal in the United States and probably in a lot of countries around the world as well. But uh, it's something to be aware of. It's something that happens. Um, it's very difficult to prove in court, and it's very stressful to try to prove that in court. So I know people who have who have uh, been discriminated against that way, uh, and they decide not to pursue it just because they feel like it's going to be too stressful in their lives, and it's not conducive to healthy, positive living. So they let it go, and they might find another job, or they might switch careers entirely. So uh, I talk a little bit about that in the book as well. Um, but let's say you reach the point where you, you work in an office and you cannot do your job anymore because uh, Parkinson's has taken over your life and it's just too much for you. Or let's say that, for example, you uh, work a manual labor job or you work a, um, any, pretty much any kind of job and you know Parkinson's has gotten too much for you, maybe you're having memory problems, Maybe you're having uh, movement issues that limit you in how you do your job. All these things can happen with Parkinson's. And so we want to be aware of that and realize when our time is up at work. Um, and when our time is up, we want to do a few things. First of all, if we feel we need to retire, we can't work anymore, we need to talk to HR or a manager and tell them this, okay? They will try to accommodate you. Legally, they have to accommodate you somehow so you can work as much as you can but if not at least you have a documented uh, proof that uh, you have um, told HR that you can't work anymore and with this proof and then with your doctor's information you can get uh, um, paperwork that you need to file for disability so filing for disability is different depending on where you live in the United States um, it's, it's extremely complicated but there are lawyers who will help you and they don't take a fee until you get your disability. And then their fee is very limited. Uh, so they can't charge you like $20,000, for example. I don't know how much it is, but it's not $20,000, but it's like the equivalent of about one month's worth of, of disability insurance. So um, there are limits on that by law. So let's say now, you want to keep working, you just can't work in an office. You need to switch things up. And and working in an office doesn't work anymore or working uh, on a bulldozer or driving or whatever you do doesn't work for you anymore, but you want to do something, right? So there are a few uh, services. You may have heard of the gig economy. Gig economy is uh, these services like Uber or other services like Rover, for example, that basically match buyers of services to sellers of services. So let's say, uh, you are a dog walker and there's someone who needs their dog walked. They'll go on these websites and they'll find each other on there and there'll be like ratings and you know how many dogs have you walked in, in your in your career and so on and so forth. 
So there, there are a few services I would look at uh, if you want to keep working. Um, if you have any kind of skills like um, Microsoft Office or um, any kind of like graphic design skills or um, you know writing skills, things like that, uh, you might want to look at a website called Upwork.com. U-P-W-O-R-K.com. This website lets you sell your services to customers that are looking to buy those services. So, so for example, if you are a writer and you are looking for clients to write advertising for, uh, you can go on there and advertise your services as, you know, I write ads. And someone who's looking to, you know, buy that service will find you on there and they'll either see your listing, which is usually free, um, uh, and if they like what you have to offer, they may create a job and then invite you to submit your proposal for that job. So it's kind of cool. It's it's like a way for for um, you to kind of find customers that that will do the kind of work that you know how to do that you enjoy doing. And you can do it at your leisure. So if you can you know do a lot of writing, you can do a lot of writing. If you can't do a lot of writing, then you won't. You'll do like one a week or something. Um, or one a month, however much you can handle. So that's great about that. You can you can kind of uh, go up or down depending on um, what you're able to do. I talked a little bit about Uber. You may want to avoid this if you have trouble driving, but if you can drive properly um, and safely, then Uber may be something you want to look into. Uber lets you, um, you know, drive people around. Basically, you set your own hours. You turn on the app in your car when you're ready to go and pick up customers. They'll ask for a car on the app, and if you respond, you say yes. You know I'm available to pick this person up. And all of a sudden, you will um, you know be hired as the driver for the for the moment. And uh, you know it's a great way to make a uh, hundred dollars a day, two hundred dollars a day. Uh, you know maybe just do it for fun to get out of the house a couple times a week. Um, so that's something you might want to consider doing. Uh, as a side job. Another job that you might want to consider doing is, like I said, the dog walking. Uh, there's a website called Rover.com. Rover.com lets you, uh, you know, sell your dog walking or dog care uh, services to people that have dogs and are looking to hire people who can take care of their dog for them while they're away on business or whether they're on vacation or if they just, you know, can't come home in the middle of the day and walk the dog, and the dog needs to get out, uh, that's a that's you know a good service that they may use to find someone to walk their dog. So I know a couple of people with Parkinson's who use Rover as a way to make income. So you might want to check that out. So that's it for now. If you like this video, please hit subscribe down below. If you have any ideas for other companies you may want to consider working for, put them down in the comments. I'd like to hear uh, if you have worked with any other companies that let you define your own work parameters. I'd love to hear all about it. Uh, post it down below in the comments. Thanks.